In this chapter, we covered the tools in AutoCAD that allows us to edit our drawings. So let's use these tools now to clean up the chapter project where we created that landscaping project. So let's go and open that up. And I'm going to do a save as. Put this in the proper folder for us so that you have a starting example of what we need to work with. So first of all, what we're going to do is erase some of these points that we've inserted. We don't want them showing up as dots or crosshairs in this case in our drawing. So let's open up the properties palette to help us out. I'm going to dock it here on the left. That's going to help us out quite a bit. So I'm going to select everything here with my selection window. Now all I want are the points. So I'm going to use my Properties Palette Quick Select tool. So I use my current selection, and I want just the points. And then set it to Equals, By Layer, and I want to include them in my new selection set. So I click OK. That filtered out everything else except for the points. And now I'm going to erase them. And my points are gone. Now let's move over to our little pond. Now this part's going to get a little tricky. What we're going to do is arrange all of these hexagon shaped stepping stone shapes so that they're neatly arranged and equally spaced. Now we have an ellipse here, and when we use an ellipse to create a pathway, AutoCAD often does weird things. It doesn't really know what to do with an ellipse when you use the array command, the path array. So let's say we offset this by three units. What we'll need to do is break it. Use the break command. Select a point here. And then just select another point here. Just a little bit of a break. Now we also need to get rid of all of these other objects here. All of these other hexagons. So we're going to use the same technique that we did with our points. Select everything with the crossing window. Go to your quick select. And then select polylines. All the other settings should be good. Click OK. And we do want to keep one of them. So I'm going to hold down my Shift key while I select one of them so that it unselects everything and then erase the others. Now let's move this hexagon shape. Grab it from the midpoint of the top here and click it onto the end point right there. Now I'm going to break this ellipse a little bit more, about right there to the end, to give a good little distance away. Now we can adjust this later on if we need to. Okay, so now we're about set. Sometimes though, when you break an ellipse, it does strange things to it. So let's make sure it's what we need it to be. It cut it off right there, it broke it at that quadrant point. And that's not what we want to do. It also converted it to a spline. We need this to be one path. So there's what we're going to do. We're going to use poly edit, P edit. Type in PE, press return. Now, here's a little tip. If you type in the letter M before you get started, press enter. This will allow you to select multiple objects all in once. So I select them, everything I need, press enter. Type in Y for yes. I do want to convert them to polylines. 10 is a great option for that setting. And then click join. Press enter, press enter again. Now we have one polyline. Now you can see what it's done here, is it's broken it up into all of these little segments. So that's okay, just don't explode that or else you'll have a whole bunch of little bitty lines. So now we're ready. So if we come up here and go to the path array option, select our hexagon, press enter, select our broken ellipse as our pathway. So we have a nice little pathway here, works fantastically. And I like the way it looks, so I'm just going to really leave it the way it is. Right now it's set up to have a distance of three units in between. Now what we can do is change a couple of things, like align the items. This way it's just keeping them rotated the exact same way. I like them to slightly rotate as they go around. So I'm going to leave that alone. I'm going to close array. And there we go, we have our pathway. Now select our spline and erase that. Now let's open up the wall where the door is right here so that we can walk through it. Let's use the trim command. 
type in the word trim, press enter, and let's just select all of these items. Press return, click this button right here and you see the little preview, lets you know that's what's going away. Now we had selected more than what we needed to here, but a lot of times it's okay to select more items like we did there just because it's so much quicker to do this. And then trim, as opposed to coming up here, selecting one item and then another item. And a lot of times it can just take longer, even if it only saves you one or two seconds. If you're doing a command or an activity every 20 or 30 seconds, so you're doing you know two or three things every minute, maybe even more than that, and you can shave a second off of everything you do, that adds up to a lot of time. So you get done quickly. And that's the point here. Now let's go to the planting area. Let's go back over here. Now let's erase these circles. It's easy enough here to grab them all, so we're going to select them and then click Erase. Let's also clean up this area here. Let's make it rounded. Let's use the fillet command. Let's use a radius of 10. Let's select some of these corners, and let's just keep doing that until we get nice rounded corners on everything. And if you can't, like right here, it gives you a little bitty glyph that says, no, it's too big. That's okay. Let's select something else and let's see. Now we can't do that. That radius is too big. So we'll go over here and we'll come back later and make a smaller radius for that one. Now the preview feature is very nice because it gives you a real good look of what it's going to look like. Go really small with a radius of one. There we go. Now one thing that we could do, if I undo this, is to just grip edit that. Stretch it back down this way. And now do a fillet radius of 10. And you may need to go back and clean up some of your other spots too. Just do a little bit of grip editing like that, and that rounds it up much better. Now let's give this a little bit of thickness. Use the offset command of one, select it, put it on the inside. It gives us a little bit of a planting wall. Now let's draw a circle. Let's make it radius of two. Let's draw another circle starting at the center. Use your center O snap, put it at about right here, which will be about four units. Draw another circle, type in NEA, and just snap it into there. And let's make this circle radius 0.5. Now come up here to our polar array. Select this circle, press enter, type in CEN for our center O snap, and we're going to put little bitty circles all over it that way. Right now we have six items. Let's change that to eight. That looks pretty good. Type in E to erase. Erase that circle. So what we have here now is a larger bush with some smaller plants underneath it. Let's use the copy command. Select this array and that circle. Right click. Just pick somewhere around there. And let's put in a several of these. Just put them in different spots. And that looks good. So we're going to have a few bushes with several plantings around it so that it looks more developed. So here we go. We have edited our drawing. We've trimmed up the doorway here to come into our building. And we can even trim up this right here. Use the trim command to select these two lines and click that. So now this is one concrete pad. We cleaned up our pond with our stones and we cleaned up our planting area. So now you've seen how to create a drawing and now we've seen how to go back and edit that drawing to make improvements to it.